So, so ha- how did you guys meet again? R- remind me. We met through a uh, so an investor in Zulu Paz, close with the Foster family. Mm-hmm. My brother, yeah. And um, introduced us to Dave as, uh, hey, this is a, this is a good person, and we want to surround ourselves with good people, you know, in the early stages, and it's turned into a great relationship where he's essentially our, you know, kind of our COO type of role. Nice. Yeah, it's a great story. Uh, you know, yeah, you Zulu can do better has, than that for sure. Zulu Pots has has a very active uh, group of investors. The, the the people that have become involved from an invest, investor standpoint um, obviously really believe in the company, and uh, there's a very active group that is both expanding the existing ranks of investors, but also they're looking for opportunities. Um, both for revenue generation, but also people. And, and so uh, Aaron, I'll shout him out, um, it definitely fits that bill. And his daughter and my brother's daughter, um, I think went to camp together or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they, he, just, he thought I should meet Rob and the team. And um, once I did meet Rob and the team, I, I immediately wanted to be involved. Nice. And here we are. Nice. Uh, the, uh, the the term active investors can mean a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so that was, I was really cur- uh, curious where uh, you were going with that. Yeah. In a positive, <laughs> in this yeah, 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 very positive they're, connotation. They're, we they're, have they're active not, investors. <laughs> they're not yeah. like those active, very loud investors, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, I know a couple of active investors. Um, <laughs> So, so it's yeah no no I know a lot of active investors and most of, and most of the, most of the time you know the activity can be extremely helpful yeah. yeah yeah so I'm really glad you guys have had that experience. Welcome to the Legacy Angel Network Venture Lounge, where nothing ventured is nothing changed. For Matt Hollentaler, press one. For member services, press two. For real raw startup stories, press three. For all other questions or concerns, please wait on the line in our next... Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Helmantaller, and you're listening to Venture Lounge, after-hour conversations with founders and investors. These are the stories, insights, and conversations that you aren't going to find on the company website. Because the real lessons you learn in the startup world, the risk you take as an entrepreneur, the highs and the lows... The moments in your journey when no one else believes in you right before you break through. Those are the moments that you just have to hear for yourself. So grab a drink and listen in to the men and women who are changing the world. Welcome to the Venture Lounge. Welcome back to Venture Lounge, everybody. (laughs) Nothing venture, nothing change. My name is Connor Sherman, creative director here at uh, Legacy Angel Network. Joined today, as always, by our fearless founder, Matt Helmantaller. Matt, what's up? What is up? How you doing, man? Good, man. Straight. You. It's almost like you and I uh, did this. two podcasts, and it, it, we're both wearing the same. We're not going to fool anybody. Nope, nope. Uh, yeah. Knock out that we got to keep the content coming, guys. You know, that's yeah, what it's, it's all it's about. Really got to pile it on. Double it up. Compound. Who's content, in charge of your compound. wardrobe <laughs> <in> here? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's kind of self-governed, unfortunately. Well, I think your wife picks out all of your clothes. Right? <laughs> well, she buys all of it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My Aubrey's got. It really is amazing how she's just like understands my taste to a T. I mm. mean, I'm I'm pretty much a spoiled brat when it comes to you know. Yeah, Kelly does whatever. not pick out clothes for me at all. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, yeah. she doesn't like lay it out in the morning or anything <laughs> weird <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? No, but she would not do that. No, she's, no, she she's would. off. She's she's out like you know. Lifting up buildings uh, right, at 5 right. a.m. She's got yeah, time yeah. To yeah she's your busy crossfitting for sure. Yeah, um, his wife is hardcore. She is man, hardcore. and podcast producer, and you know left uh, or had to had to leave early today. But she's usually making sure this goes well. So oh, she's, anything a, she's a part happen. of this too. Yeah. She's a part. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. We we cool. moved down uh, from Ohio almost exactly a year ago. Um, just to pursue some crazy venture capital shit, and here we are. You know? Welcome. Yeah, it's 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 nuts. They uh, they they they've been um, they've been a tremendous part of our team. They're gluttons for punishment. <laughs> um, it's uh, they're they're on the crazy startup journey because I mean, really, we're a startup that funds startups. Yeah. So it's a very 
interesting thing. So it's it's uh, yeah. So they're experiencing some of the startup journey as well. So it's uh, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, man. Yeah, Would, wouldn't trade it for anything though. You know the risk. Is worth the I reward. I would trade it for deal. something. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I really like appreciate it. you saying that. I just got to be honest, though. I, I can think of ten things right now. I trade this. Well, everything has a price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> count the cost. You got to count the cost. You know. Yes. 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 <laughs> but uh, we're getting into like the fun part of Florida now, where the weather's not like a hundred. Doesn't feel like a hundred and ten, or hopefully soon. You know? Soon. Soon. Yep. Soon. No, it was just... ninety degrees yesterday, so. Lots of rain lately. So no, it is funny. It, it was like a month into, or, or like a month into summer, we, Arvin and I both realized, like, we're just like not going outside anymore. That's so weird, you know? <laughs> like, it's the exact opposite of, right. Yeah, it's like the winter in Florida, because everybody's like trying to stay out of whatever's going on out there in July, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's freaking hot. You know, when you can go from your, your front door to your car, and you need to go, but turn around and go back and take a shower. It's a, it's a, that's an issue. That's an issue. No My doubt. glasses get so foggy sometimes I can't even like, <laughs> instantly. I get out of the car or something like that. <laughs> My, da- my daughter will tell you, she'll be like, she, it's actually, it's kind of cute too. She'll take them off my head and want to rub, rub them up so that they're oh, that's oh, cute. normally, that's nice. yeah, she's five. That's Is she nice. five. I got a five-year-old too. Oh, you do? I have a five-year-old. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. What, uh, just started kindergarten, just live. Yeah, they start on Monday. Oh, really? All right, cool. Well, she starts, he, he, I have a six-year-old too. He was in kindergarten last year, so. Oh, nice. Uh, he, he graduated, so he's in first, <laughs> first grade now, so. Uh, Cold, man. I, I kind of laughed there because that that's a pretty low bar to graduate kindergarten. But um, so <laughs> but, he be this, but he did it. But he did it. We got to celebrate the wins, right? That's right. We got to celebrate that's all right. the wins. That's right. All the wins. That's it. But I mean, let me tell you, man. Building what you're building with, with Zulu Pods and being a young parent, you're like really in deep, aren't you? You're really in deep. Yeah, we're 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 in the thick of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean, whenever this. You know, when we talk about this idea of building something with little kids, because my wife is a co-founder and we're in it together. And she gets it. Yeah. It, I mean, she's a part of it. Right. It becomes yeah. part of your life. Yeah. Right. It's not really, a, it's not really work when it's like that. I mean, there's, yeah. it, there's days when it feels like lots, like you just right. talked about, I could j- trade this for maybe 10 other things. But, <laughs> but if we're talking it's about... A, I'm joking. Uh, no, I, I know. But I'm, I'm playing. But, 20 other things. Yeah. I'm kidding. No but but if, if we had to keep working, you know, if we have to keep working, we can't trade it for some, some uh, something right. else, right? Uh, right. For us, it, because we're both in it, it that's, that's, that's the only way that we, I think we've been able to do it. Mm. Like if yeah. one of us was in it and one of us wasn't, think about that load sharing yeah. and the conversations, they get that much harder, right? Yeah, but it, when you're both in it together, you just you just keep figuring it out. Plus we used to work together, my wife and I, so work is work and being together in work has always been kind of normal right. for us. Usually people are like, How do you how do you do that? How do how do you work together yeah. and you're married? Mm. For us it just feels normal. We just kinda especially with the kids, you know, in terms of like figuring out like like, well, you do this, I'll go do this, I'll be on this call, then we'll swap with the kids, and I'll pick someone up today, I'll drop someone off. So yeah. You just figure it out. You know, we don't have a choice, right? That's awesome, man. I mean, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's the ideal way for that kind of thing to happen. Like, uh, that's like, that, that's like picture perfect in a, in a perfect world. Yeah. My wife and I would work together, and we'd have a family, <laughs> and uh, we would go through all this, you know, whatever, and everything would be rainbows and gummy bears, and we just figure it all. That's what everyone wants. Very few founders get that. So, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> we all hate you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That was the same kind of thing with Aubrey and I, where we liked our what we were doing previously for work, and Aubrey was running her own like boutique marketing a- agency in in Ohio. But it was uh, it was really like we were definitely pursuing different goals at that point, you know. And so we were trying to figure out like how do we pursue the same goal, like it, you know, that just felt like that made a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. It did for us. Um, so. Yeah. Matt, introduce uh, who yeah. we got here. How do you guys get connected? This is this is uh, this is Zulu Pods, man. This is, I'll, I mean, I'll let I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, but like, so we we connected. Um, you guys had reached out because yeah. you know, just cold, kind of a cold yeah. reach out. Yeah, cold, cold. Actually, cold you know, we re- why I reached out was because of the some of your LinkedIn content in the podcast. Oh, oh okay. Cool. So, 
Awesome. Cool, man. It's awesome. you know, it's, it was exciting to see um, an angel group being doing like you know doing some extra things out of you know in, in the podcasting and building cool. the brand. So awesome, man. Just as a shout out to you guys. Yeah, thank tight, you very man. much. Very thank you very cool. much. This was on his bucket list. He wanted yeah. to be a guest here. Shout one out, Lindsay. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Graduating kindergarten, being on the podcast. Yeah, business could fail, but he was on our podcast. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Was great. No, but no, but we we got on a we got on a video call, and uh, he started just telling me about Zulu Pods and about his passion and kind of how things were rolling. And I was just I was I was really stoked. Um, and I was so stoked. I was, uh, I started calling up some people. Hey, you got to look at this. Hey, you got to look at this. Hey, look at this. And now you guys have been moving through our process and, and we're going to be putting you in front of our, our group for funding because uh, you deserve to be in front of our group and many other groups for funding. Well, thanks. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and, and give us a little bit of your your backgrounds and all that fun stuff. Yeah, okay. And uh, actually, maybe if you want if you want to start. And uh, I'm, curi- <laughs> I'm just curious because I'm curious how you would describe it from, you know, a partner that came up, you know. Yeah, you sure. Know, maybe not a, like, you know. I'm curious. How, I'm curious how you describe it. And then I'll, and I'll then I'll do my best. Sure. So I'm I'm Dave Foster. Um, I've been working with uh, the Zulu Pods team since uh, a little before January. Um, so I'm I'm a relative newcomer to the group. Um, I'm uh, I run operations administration there, uh, kind of behind the scenes guy. And my background is in startups. My I, I got my degree in computer science. Um, went to UCF, finished at Rollins, and um, I don't. I, I've never not worked at a startup. Um, well, interesting. So it's 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 been important to me uh, from from the beginning of my career. I guess the the high risk, high reward. Uh, mostly the risk part is what I've what I've realized. <laughs> but, uh, all, right, all right, you got to tell us some of your startup stuff. Like, so what other yeah, startups did, yeah, but, did yeah, you work for? Good, he's got some good. He's got some good. come on, sure. bring it. So, I, I, the, one of the most fun companies um, was a, a, a medical device startup. It was called Systems One, and uh, man, I, I was I was in my late twenties when I, I met uh, this guy Tom Arthur who had founded it, but it, it was just him. And, and his daughter was helping him out with some marketing stuff. But he was a medical device tech. He came up with this concept. And uh, I, I, I actually contracted with him for one install of his system. And immediately he offered me a job as CTO. Um, so um, I accepted because I, I was at the time doing software development for, for another very small group of people. And uh, we ended up running that company for about eight years, grew it to a, a decent workforce, created some, some good, good jobs, a lot, of, uh, a lot of good income, installed a lot of systems. And then uh, we got some active investors involved who uh, removed the founder and replaced him with another, another CEO. And, and that uh, did not go well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I've certainly seen I've seen the the good side of active investors here at Zulu Pods, and I've seen <laughs> I've seen the downside. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. I mean, you know who to look out for, like who, who uh, you let on the team, kind of deal. Yes, yeah. most of most of the startup world, I think, is learning what not to do. Yep. So, and, and a lot of I mean, a lot of it you 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 hit it. Learning what not to do. You can be told what not to do. But learning what not to do, I think, has far greater impact um, than being told what not to do. I, and that's definitely how I learn. I, yeah. have, I have to do yeah. something. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not one of those people who can look at, learn from example from it, somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with so, you. So, yeah, this, at, at Zulu Pods, I, I'm definitely seeing, it's interesting, too, my background from, in computer science and being heavily involved on the technology side of a lot of these companies. Um, I'm used to being the, the subject matter expert. And as my career evolved, I moved from the tech side to admin and ops. Mm-hmm. And I really found that's where I, I thrive. I'm, I'm definitely one of those jack of all trades types, right? Mm. So um, 
in that role here, it's, it's, it's sometimes frustrating to not understand the technology <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> That's but a new I'm also, position for you. You usually understand that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I'm also very, very satisfied with the credentials of those who do know the tech that's important. and understand it. That's super important. Yeah. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Rob is one of those people. He understands. It. <laughs> <laughs> not like not like some of our engineers. <laughs> Rob, tell us tell us your background, man. How did you get into all this? Uh, yeah, so my name's Rob. I'm the I'm a co-founder and CEO of Zulupods. Um, I've really been in aerospace and defense since I graduated college. So since I was 22, I'm 38 now. So for 16 years, this has been, you know, kind of my life. Zulu Pods, we started three years ago. Um, but before that, I spent time at Pratt & Whitney, big jet engines on the commercial side, on the military side. Um, I spent a lot of my time in, most of that was in Connecticut and leading next-gen military products to the market. So the next-gen warfighter you know, the engine that's on the next F-35 or whatever. Then I came to Florida and I saw that there was all these little jet engines or we saw that there were little jet engines. My wife actually was working on similar things. Um, you know, in this world of these little, these little guys was very different than the big guys. But, and we just saw an opportunity where how the current kind of, how most engineers were thinking about even designing some things on the little ones were just miniaturizing stuff from the big ones and we said hey there's actually a way better way to to think about like lubrication systems on little ones versus just miniaturizing everything um and the, you know the best parts when you think about in engineering the best part is no part mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so that's so that background in terms of just in the defense world aerospace world is you know my wife and i both being there on a car ride actually to orlando uh Driving past Melbourne, I guess, we had this thought of the Tide Pod for the jet engine, and after that, things kind of happened pretty quick, and uh, you know, my wife is very much like the, our first inventor, really, the, you know, the early kind of vision and, and working hard to get us started. We grabbed a couple awesome, a couple other co-founders, and uh, like within a couple days of her sharing the idea, the company was founded to uh, two of our other Nice. early co-founders but <clears throat> yeah our, we have a big engineering pool that has a background in aerospace and defense and uh you know in the early days of zulu pods like before we had you know before we had customers or traction or even money the thing that always got me excited was the was the fact that we could we were getting really smart people that wanted to join the team like yeah. phds mm -hmm. and so it was yeah. like okay we're on to, like yep. that doesn't happen unless you're really on to something right right, right. and right yep. and they could see the merit and, and they could and, see the vision and they could see how the, the the technology and the future in this case we're very much talking about the future of warfare and how things were evolving mm -hmm. and little drones and yep. and they just got that and um you know if we could, early on that was the fire that really was like, okay we, we could do this like that, 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 that type of traction that's huge man i mean for any for any founder to to have an idea and then for someone who is smarter than you, yes. that you respect, <laughs> to come along and be like, "You're onto something." Hmm. And they start to catch to catch on. I, I there's something that we want to productize, and and I I brought all these people from these different capital markets and family offices and stuff, and I said, "Hey, there's this thing," and I brought them all on a call, and it was just like. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and it was, but that, that was a very similar thing with Legacy Angel Network. Like we, I, I had this idea. I don't have a, I don't have a markets background. I don't have a, I don't have an angel investing background. Yeah. I just know a lot of freaking people. Yeah. And I saw this little gap in the community, so I started poking these people and saying, "Hey, what do you think if we did this?" And we da 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 da. And like, people just start to gravitate and say, "Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea." And then. And they were all smarter than me, which yeah, isn't difficult. Yeah, yeah. But they were all they were all a lot smarter than me. And and so in the early days, and even now, even today, when I see someone who I respect, who has way more experience than me, come along and say, "You guys are onto something. This is really cool," and they and and they jump in, it's uh, it's humbling every time. Yeah. Every time it's humbling. Um, it's uh, and it gets you even more motivated or fired yeah, up. Yeah. Absolutely, because there are there are dark days. There are days sure. when 
<laughs> you have to as a, as a as a founder. You have to remember. Okay, I, I, this is why I did this. This is who believe who believes in it. I'm not crazy. Totally. All right. Let's put one foot in front of the yeah. other, and then you then you keep going. Yep. So just tell us about early like Zulu Pod uh, like um, early partner supporters like how you started finding your first initial applications or what was everyone's impression of it immediately? Did it take a lot of convincing? You know. Um, yeah, I mean, in the early days, uh, we had um, there's there's a couple instances that stand out. So we had a um, a company called Wedevin Associates. They're like a so we play in this world of tribology. Um, it's kind of the idea of things that are contacting and what type of fluids do you put in between to make things mm-hmm. not wear out, right? That's like oil in a nutshell. Um, and so we had uh, this that's company what, called. I think that's why we take fish oil every morning. Is that the reason? <laughs> like same do you kind take of fish oil? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Keep, oh. keep, keep those joints working well. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. All right. I'm, I'm yeah, trapped. so we had so we this there's this this company, Web and Associates. They're a top tier tribology company. So they work with companies like the Raytheons and the Pratts, right? Mm. And so we approached them, um, and uh, we hadn't raised any money, or you know, we had any. We didn't even have a prototype yet. Um, and they were very much like, yes, this idea of packaging fluids, particularly oil, small amounts of oil makes a ton of sense for emergency use cases, um, for things like drones and engines that power drones and missiles. And he, you know, this is a guy that's been doing this for 50 years and mm-hmm. has a huge brand. And so he was an early supporter f- for us to continue to keep working hard. And then um, our chief scientific officer, uh, we took him. We we were able to. Um, he was at, he was doing ballistic missile defense at John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. So he was literally doing, you know, writing stuff that I don't even know what he was writing for code or you know in some dark classified spaces. And he was like, Yeah, okay, this. The this, guy definitely has his this, high school diploma. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> he's got that. Yeah, he graduated kindergarten. Uh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so so he was like he and he was like okay yeah I think you know there's something there and he played with did some you know some thought about some of the physics did some math and um, so those are like two early you mm-hmm. know those are two different those are two PhDs right that yeah. both are like um, they're on, you're onto something uh, um, we you know in the in the in the beginning stages like we would just we would be like the so Todd that was Todd he was our fifth co-founder um, and then about a year and four months after the company was incorporated we raised our first round of capital with a group of like eight or nine angel investors we raised like 425k and it was enough I could take a little salary go full time mm-hmm. so I was full time we had like six or seven of us kind of part time we would meet at night right every mm-hmm. Tuesday night every Wednesday night I had a pretty, I was pretty like adamant about we had to always meet once a week, you know, because I was still, right. I was full time. But they were able to still do stuff a little bit part time or during right. the day because the different jobs they had. We raised that bucket of money in September 2021. And, and at that point, we were starting to integrate with, we had a prototype. We were starting to talk with, now that Todd came on, some other engineers. Now we could start to talk with the Navy, the Army, mm-hmm. start building those relationships. Because early on, when we just had a vision or an idea, you know, it's hard to sell a PowerPoint right. to the Army yeah. or the Navy, right? right. Um, but around like September 2021 is when we started like, okay, we have enough horsepower, both from uh, enough PhDs, enough people that saying this is real, some prototypes, started building relationships with the Army and the Navy around, you know, Q4, September 2021. And we started seeing like real traction in the market at that point, like real like customer validation. Okay, yeah, this, this makes sense. That 425K lasted us for like five or six months. We did some testing. The testing showed everything we were doing on paper and our career experiences made sense in the physical world, right? More, more validation from the Army and the Navies. And we, ra- and we started raising another round of capital in March or May of 2022, bringing on more engineers. And I mean, it's kind of just always, since that Q4 of, September, of 2021, it's kind of been like, the story I'm saying here, where more validation from the customer base, bringing on more great people, people like Dave, right? Like, what roles do we have to fill, you know, that, and people falling in our laps, and we're like, okay, or, or, or we're seeking out certain roles, sure. right? But, you know, a lot of it was, br- like, continuing to find engineering talent. Mm-hmm. 
we uh, we got to a point where we couldn't keep doing testing out of like Todd's garage anymore. He moved from <laughs> Maryland to Massachusetts. We built we put a facility up at UMass Amherst. Um, that's been huge for us because now we can do testing. You know, we, I mean, we we can only do testing for so long and be presenting stuff to the Navy and the Army from Todd's basement. That's cool that you guys have that, like, yeah, the basement garage store. Oh, we have, oh yeah, yeah. Amazing. oh yeah, we have oh, that. We great. have. I mean, if we want to go all the okay. way back, if you want to go all the way yeah, back, yeah, we do. To, yeah, we do. Like Please. when our first prototype, right? This is like it's kind of like there's this is a bit of a funny story, and I'm not usually misleading as in terms of a CEO, but <laughs> but you know. <laughs> I love the caveat. Yeah, 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 yeah. little, little disclaimer. I'm not normally dishonest. But, but we had to think about how to raise that prototype. Uh, we had to think about how to develop a prototype to even raise that first round of like 425K. And like the stuff we're doing is like, you know, very technical. And like there's a, you know, it yeah. costs a lot of money to do, like to develop a product that's a, I can hand a product to somebody. So in the beginning, we had the first prototype we, we developed this idea of a tide, a true tide pod, like it would break down under heat. So mm. just like a tide pod, you put it in the water, it breaks down, the, wow. the, the detergent mm. comes out. We said, okay, in, our, when we, in the beginning stages, one way of activating our pods could have just been from heat, and so we, we said, okay, let's go develop pods, like a plastic pod with oil in it, that we could just show that we could, when it was under heat in a certain spot in the engine, it would break down. And, um, but I never really let on that that probably was, wasn't gonna work as an actual product. Like, it wasn't gonna work, this idea of putting plastic in a jet engine and then it would just be lived yeah. there after it was broken I down. Like, see Rob Gr <laughs> Gr Gronkowski going, Zulu pods. <laughs> so, so we made our first prototype though of like truly breaking down from plastic and in the beginning when the, this team was smaller, like we never, Todd and I never really told everybody else that as soon as we got that first round of funding, we would start to actually create the real product and it would be metal. But we had, how could we cheaply make a product that we could show just, right. just the idea of right. pod spewing oil out when it needed to come out and being, you know, the small amount. And um, so after like we did that, finally it was like, okay, now I can tell everybody like, yeah, guys, we were never actually going to make a product that... <laughs> Probably looked like that, um, <laughs> but it got us our first round of capital. But it did, and, it did illustrate I mean, the it was, idea. And it was a true it prototype. The and, idea. In, in a sense, yeah, and that's yeah. one thing I would say to like you know hard tech companies that like figure out how to make that prototype as cheap as possible and just show that show that you have that prototype, have a physical part you can hold. It goes such a long way with investors mm. because like. It, they're they're not going to buy into the physics. They're not going to buy into the into your PowerPoint, yeah, right. right? Like, I, I have to admit, when you came here with with the uh, with the pod, oh, yeah, I, Rob, in, bring out the pod. Yeah, it, yeah in, my, see the pod. in my head, <laughs> I don't have it in my head. head. <laughs> I told them on the way here. I'm like, Shh, I forgot the pod. <laughs> it, I mean, sorry. just in my head it's because fun. you think of the, you think of the Tide pods. You think of like the little, you know. I was like, you know. Um, I was a little disappointed. I'm like, I was ho I was hoping for some little squishy pot. <laughs> that was what the first ones looked yeah, like. Yeah. You know, and but no, it was. It's like this true metal, like amazing little. It looks like it should be shot out of a gun. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah, you guys have all kinds of like cool 3D illustrations really on the cool. website. With it, you know, it's really cool. Oh, shout out to our marketing team. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, Dave's a part of that website development. Our website is, is uh, we're pretty proud of that website. It's a nice website, man. Oh, thanks. So, uh, I need and to that's ask coming why. from a really snooty <laughs> marketer over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, but I do need to ask, why is Rolls-Royce on the website? We need to know why Rolls-Royce is... Can you talk about that? Oh, you're think so. So Rolls, do you know, you're, are you thinking of Rolls Royce the car? Yeah. Okay. So Rolls Royce also makes jet engines. Oh, yeah. no way! They're, they're the top three that. in the like. So Rolls Royce, GE, and he's a creative. And Pratt Whitney are the top three. I mean, three. I know about Rolls Royce because of like rappers, you know. <laughs> suicide doors. Yeah, yeah. Suicide. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking yeah, about butterfly music. doors and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we, I mean, we would love to. We we would love to play in some of the high end car yeah, market yeah. or marketplace. We think there's a home there. There, yeah, One there's day. like it's a pretty boundless uh, like application, right? Totally. I mean, we think anything that has moving parts, any anything that has gears and bearings, and mm. at least just with the with with when we think about what we putting oil in our pods, but we think we, we could put lots of different things in our pods. But yeah, I mean, we're excited about, I was just telling Jessica that 
we've had great traction in aerospace and defense, and we're seeing some nice wins in terms of government contracts and starting to think about ground vehicles mm -hmm. in the Army space, Humvees, tanks. Loss of lubrication is a problem. You don't want soldiers getting out of the things that are going to protect them in the battlefield, mm -hmm. right? right? You want them to mm -hmm. stay in there. You don't want to have to leave those assets behind. Yep. Um, so we're starting to see some traction in the ground vehicle side with the Army. We're starting to think about or seeing traction in the wind turbine world. Repair, reliability, mm. onshore, offshore winds. It's pretty expensive to take something out of the top of a gearbox in the middle of the ocean. Yep. How can we help from a backup system standpoint there? Mm -hmm. Brought on a, a subject matter expert in that space. We're going to start thinking about what's our strategy to penetrate that market, get some early wins like we did in aerospace and defense. So we're pretty excited about that. And what we think about as we think about new markets is understanding the rules of the game first, like bringing right. in subject matter experts that can help us. Great. What are the constraints yeah. in those spaces? So we either very, so we very efficiently find out if we have a home or we don't. Right. It's okay if we don't have a place somewhere, but right. we yeah. gotta find that out quickly. Like right. we don't have tons of time, energy, people, mm -hmm. uh, capital for right. that matter. So yeah, we're pretty excited about just some of the other places that the tech mm -hmm. can go. Dave, can you tell us what your initial interest in it was, like where you started seeing the mayor with your background? What do you sure. think when you saw Zulu? Yeah, yeah. So when when Aaron uh, introduced me to to the concept, um, you know, he told me a little bit about it. It sounded like a good idea, um, and then introduced me to the team. Um, I'll say, you know, for for one, um, the the. The Z pod, the idea of, of putting lubrication exactly where it needs to be, eliminating all the um, these unnecessary components, you know, simplifying the supply chain, et cetera. All the technical benefits were pretty obvious right off the bat. Um, and kind of one of those like, well, why, yeah, why has this not been done yet, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that, that that was the first reaction I had to the idea and the concept is it seemed sound. Um, and then when I got to meet the team, started to learn more about their credentials, it became apparent that, okay, they also know how to do it. They, they know what they're talking about. Um, but then for me, one of the most important aspects was, was getting to know the individuals and the people who work at the company. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of businesses. I've seen them come. I've seen them go. Um, I've seen opportunities come along. Um, but what I've really learned is that the, the people involved are really what's most important. I mean, we spend m the majority of our waking life with the people that we work with, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think when I first started working with startups, I was very much into, again, high risk, high reward, quick turnaround. Let's, you know, I want to I want to be set and retire, you know, young before I was 40. Obviously, that ship has sailed. But uh, <laughs> um, I've, I've come to understand that a large part of the value in, in being involved with any anything like this is is the quality of the character of the people that you're working with. Yep. Mm. And um, Rob and the team that, that he and Daniela have assembled around their concept demonstrates that, that yeah. quality of character in spades. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy with what they put together initially and then what we are continuing to build. Um, we're, we're, we're very focused, one, on, on the industry and, and where we're going, like Rob, pointed out, we we're looking at the low hanging fruit. There's, there's a huge market here, but we want to be smart about how we pursue it. But we're also very invested in, in the culture of the company because we're building something to last. That's mm. awesome. Um, it, to, your, to your point, um, uh, you're going into the trenches. Like when you're, when you're doing a startup like this, guys, I mean, you guys know this. I mean, you're you're in the, you're in the trenches with people. I mean, yeah. it, it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. This is hard stuff, and you deal with all kinds of craziness. And if you're not down the path with people that you can trust mm -hmm. uh, and that trust you, um, it, it's already dark, and it can get a whole lot darker. 
You know what I mean? It's already difficult. It can get a lot more difficult. So, I mean, so to your point, man, I mean, yeah, it's, it's doing this kind of work, uh, doing it this kind of way. I mean, in a, in a big company, you can hide, hide out among a, you know, sure. th- thousands of people and you can like, oh, the, hey, boss, can I be transferred to a different team? That guy's an idiot. You know, in a startup, you don't, you don't, you don't get that luxury. Yeah. And, uh, and then you often have so much time and energy put in, sometimes you don't always feel like you have a way out. You feel like, man, I just got to go through this. And if you, can, if you can just go through this with at very least the right people, it, it makes all that a whole lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Kudos and correct this. Uh, our, our buddy Jim Donnelly that was just on the podcast uh, talking about Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. The, the character, the team. I love he. I love when he said, uh, "Like, can't you just tell when somebody's not going to give up?" Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, you can just see mm. um, their character, and those are the people you want to be around. So it's cool that uh, y'all found that and have that on your team. You know, that's a cool way to think about it. Like, yeah, I've never like. And we definitely have people around us that'll never give up. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, I don't think that. I don't think we like that was like a, a thing we thought about. <laughs> like, but I also like when you're some when like some of the some a lot of the people. Um, that are around us, like Dave's a good example of always working for startups. So like you know he's like, like okay he, he gets it he he's gets it, it right. And yeah. then like when you like when you're developing new technology for and you work at these defense contractors. It is it is so hard to do what when we when our country or these these companies put out these amazing systems. You know, I, some of our engineers I spent sixty seventy hour weeks working with them. So we know, like we, you know, like when you're working on really hard stuff like that, you're around people that. Yeah. Hey, uh, the Air Force says we got to get this done. Okay, I guess we're working um, eight days a week, you know, type of thing. Like yep. that's the culture in in yep. a lot of these defense primes. Yeah. Um, so like, I kind of think we kind of knew some of the people we surrounded ourselves with were never going to give up just because we were already there with them, like right. working those super right. long weeks. But now it's like, hey, let's go do it on our let's go do it on our own. Let's go, let's go. You know, somebody once time asked me like, how did you? Why do you? Why? Why did you think like you could, with the right people, you could go build something like um, build something like Zulu Pods? Be in the defense world. Mm. I was like, because it used to take sixty days for me to place a purchase order. Yeah, <laughs> sixty days. Like, yeah. So there's obviously room for improvement. <laughs> That's cool, man. Right? Yeah. Like, like those things. Those things. Those it. things are the things that like. Yeah. Okay. These companies have way more money. They're, they're they have the most brilliant engineers. They're amazing companies to to work for and work with. Um, but they have they have their own. They, you know, they have challenges. There's oh, there's oh, yeah. there's room for there's mm. you know there's plenty of room for innovation and speed. Yep. Speed speed along with good tech is that's a good recipe. Yeah. yeah. No, in the big. I like I that. Mean, Never given up though. <laughs> Right, the machines are big and, and slow move, moving often for a reason, but there is something like, yeah, liberating as an entrepreneur to be like, I could just sprint and place the purchase order myself. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's well, a I charm could just call, to that. I could just use yeah. a credit card and play, you're saying I could just place this with a credit card and I don't have to like have, go through three layers of approvals? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure in my early days of starting this that people would have, uh, Wanted more of those systems and checks on approvals, <laughs> but but, uh, but, uh, but well, there's, it's, there's, there's risk. There's risk there too. Yeah, like going yeah, too yeah, fast too. Right. I'm a, I'm there's a, risk. You know, I'm very much squirrel kind of a guy, and so it, I'm not. Yeah, you don't want me running books. At all. You don't. It's just. Uh, it's just I'd be a nightmare for you. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, what yeah. what have been because some of the like the craziest like. Full sprint moments, man. Like you're talking about working eight days a week. You know, what's uh, anything vivid that sticks out to you? Uh, I mean, I have. Uh, you want? You have anything you want to? I have one. If you want me to start, go ahead. Maybe, maybe this, it'll fuel some some other thoughts. <laughs> I mean, one of the uh, things that uh, I think the whole team would say they're most proud of. I'm definitely one of the one of our proudest moments as a company. I think is. We um, decided we were no longer going to use the supply chain and buy stuff from the supply chain in terms of manufacturing stuff for our products and our prototypes, right? So we would leverage the supply chain, you know, our engineers would create a drawing, 
create a model, send it out, get it quoted, have to wait for the turnaround time, get the part back, and you know, even even if that were to take only thirty days, it's it's a long time when yeah. you're burning money for that month, right? right. Like, because in the beginning stages of a hard tech company any company but hard tech really you have to learn really fast right mm -hmm. how fast can i learn so i can iterate so we just decided okay we're not going to do this anymore we're not going to deal with the supply chain we're going to go get our own manufacturing equipment and have it in-house at the lab wow and the team made that decision and within like 45 days we had manufacturing capability up and running part-time tool maker wow. like not just like there like waiting for all the electrical work to come in, electricians to come in to put the right capabilities at the facility because you know we were running now manufacturing equipment like up and running in 45 days. So sourced it out, got it delivered, hooked up, part-time tool Amazing, maker ready to go. Man. So now, but, now like our learning just went that much faster, but. I don't think people know, will understand how difficult that, that, that getting that done in 45 days is. It's, it was that's, insane. That's like nuts. our engineers were driving around in the New England area on Saturdays and Sundays going, finding used equipment because we had to do it on a, on a budget too, yeah. obviously yeah. a shoestring budget, right? I mean, Garage sailing for the stuff. Yeah, you know? but we, <laughs> so the team, I mean, just, like you said, I don't think people realize how hard that is to yep. do to, uh, not, and to make the decision to just do it. Like right. it was still a decent amount of cash outlay at the time when we probably, you know, we had less than probably I mean, 700k in the bank, and we were laying out 60 <laughs> or 70k at one time. 10 percent of our capital. But we that's had to really... kind of the culture, anyway, because you're you had an idea, and four days later you had a company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's not it's not too far off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of our it, it, yeah. It is our culture, I think. Yeah. To, um, we have a. We have a, a saying that we like to say internally: "Get shit done," and it's on a yeah. lot of our mugs. And a good example of just I was just about to say that get shit done. <laughs> GSD certified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll be right back. We got a yeah, present no for the saying. podcast. Oh, sweet. So that's a cool. I mean, that's so that's a cool one. I mean, because that that had that was you know that was a sprint, right? Like yeah. get it done as fast as possible. Um, I mean, in general, just, you know, uh, uh, the heart and soul of our company is really with engineering and manufacturing. And that team is small, and they get... Here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no oh, way. come on. You guys really this is my it. favorite sink. <laughs> come this on. This just, this just happened. <laughs> That's killer. This man. is mine. Yeah, you that's you. Bro. And then we got I'm, some core values on oh that other mug. Oh my gosh, dude. that's sick, man. Optimistic. So an optimistic visionary. Today I am an optimistic visionary, operating with integrity, taking extreme ownership. Shout out Jocko, man. Yep. Actively exceeding expectations, demonstrating servant leadership. That's awesome. Man. I'm glad someone finally said it to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. No, this is great, man. I'm gonna. This is my favorite mug. I'm gonna. This is. This is my favorite mug. This is, I'm using it every time. Uh, Shop.zulupods.com. You can get your <laughs> right. Awesome. Yeah. This is so, this makes me, you don't understand. This is, the, this is better than any Christmas present I've gotten in the last like two years. This is amazing. I'm, I'm just kidding, honey. Your Christmas present is great. But this is, so, so, this is awesome. So I don't know if you have any other, any thoughts in terms of like Thanks, gentlemen. Sprints? This is cool. Yeah. This is awesome. You're welcome. I mean, it's all, it's a, it's a nonstop sprint. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something, you know, we were talking about, um, the, the, the character of the people that, you know, that, that work here at, at Zulu Pods and uh, the, the, the startup mentality that you need, right? Um, a lot of people just don't have that. Mm -hmm. And it's not something mm -hmm. you can teach either, right? Um, you can have all the expertise in an area, a particular area, but most of the time you're doing your job according to established procedures and protocols and, you know, the forms are already there, you just fill it out. So you have to have the mindset of, I, I, if, I, if, if this doesn't exist, I'm just gonna build it. Mm -hmm. And this company is full of that, so. That's awesome. I mean, we have, you know, we're an early stage company, but we've got executive dashboards built, we've got, you know, real-time financials we can access at any mm -hmm. time. We've got really robust systems that are there because individuals just see a gap and, and it built it. them and, yeah, and connected just, lots of software. Like when you're talking about, like, you know, in terms of our sales pipeline and pr yeah. future revenue projections and confidence levels and weaving that into our, our financials, the expenses side, having live dashboards that, like, I mean, it's amazing. I can at any given time go look at something that is live and, 
but to your point, yeah, we built, I mean, the well, and, I mean, I'm talking, again, ops and admin side. Yeah. We're not, not even but, talking on the engineering end. But, but, right, right. But that's huge. I mean, that's that's huge. And I think, I think we're a lot of angel investors, especially when they're new to angel investing, um, where they go wrong is that they try and figure out how's the... How's the? How are they going to get the pod to this and that and the? Blah, 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 and they, they they focus on that and they don't think about that kind of stuff. If you have the right people, and they are really freaking good at what they do, you can fix who the target market is. You can fix like there's so many of these other pieces that are so fixable with a little bit of direction and support. But if you don't have the right people and you don't have people that think like that and do like that. Your investment sunk. It just okay. is. It's a it's a it's a it's a crap it's a crapshoot. But every investor first needs to bet on people. You bet on people, not ideas. You can fix ideas. You cannot fix people. Mm. Um, and it, it sounds like that's really what you guys have going for you, which is another reason why uh, kudos to me for really wanting this. Um, <laughs> that, that you guys are in front of our group. No, you really impressed everybody. It wasn't just. <laughs> Uh, some of the best advice when I was when I was a lot younger. Again, uh, I, I was visiting a supplier for for one of the companies I was at uh, up in in um, Quebec, and they were at like 200, 250 people, um, but the vibe was immaculate. Right, mm -hmm. everybody was there. Everyone was showing up. Everybody, it, it was that um, humming startup feeling. Right. Um, and I asked their uh, CMO, Peter, Peter Mag, uh, how do you, how did you guys maintain this energy with the growth that you're having, right? Mm -hmm. At this size, why do you still feel like you're, you know, everybody's excited working out of the garage? And he said, it's simple. Don't hire assholes. <laughs> and if yeah. you do, fix that problem as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. I, I a, a good. I think I said this on another podcast. I don't even know if I did. I, I lose track of what I say. But um, a, a new friend of mine, Ben Ornstein, who will not come on to this show because he likes to be <laughs> behind the scenes. And, you know, it's funny too. Like I, I'm really busting his balls about it. But uh, he said something to me because he's he's accomplished a lot. The guy's just freaking brilliant. He's like in his early 30s, and he's just a the guy doesn't need to work. He, he's just accomplished so much. He's an amazing guy. Um, amazing human being, but I met him one night at this event that I'm raising money for Good Dog Studios for their thing and uh, in Orlando, and he gives me a little bit of his background. I had this idea I mentioned a little bit earlier and stuff, and I said, hey, I'd love to pick your brain one of these days. Next day, dude in Orlando, he calls me and says, hey, um, I'd like to drive down and spend some time with you today. Can I do that today? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and he comes in here, and he just spends like four hours with me that's on so cool. My stuff, and I said, "Man, most people don't do this. This is so, this is such a nice thing to do." And he goes, "And I just said, you don't understand. Most people would never do this." And he goes, "He goes, I have a little mantra in life." I said, "What is it?" He goes, "Just don't be a dick." <laughs> I love that. I love just that. Don't be a dick. Simple but effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's. But yeah, don't don't hire assholes. Yeah. Just don't be a dick. Like it's it's. These are all really simple things. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you can get away with that, like just uh, going through life and your business dealings by being aggressive and, you know, uh, so many other desi undesirable traits. But I think, yeah, nice guys kind of win in the end. That's kind of how it goes. There's plenty of evidence of, of people succeeding despite, uh, yeah. you know, not following those, those rules. But it's, it's good to be the exception, I think. Mm. I well, I think too, like in the if you think about like in the in as you're trying to build a team, you you know um, you're in a very different boat than like maybe having a less desirable personal trait when you're at a established company. That person doesn't have to, or the, the a core group of people don't have to build the team around them. The market kind of has built that for them. People mm -hmm. people need a job. There's an opening job at a RTX or. Uh, well, I shouldn't say the defense. Any any tr more bigger established mm -hmm. company, not not the defense world, uh, um, but anywhere. So you you really do have to. That mantra makes it's really important because you've got to build this team up. Um, 
and protecting that culture is is you can have the most talented person in the world and i think where leaders fail is that sometimes they'll bring in the talent and the talent can be a real jerk oh. and and then they're like well i can't get rid of them because we need and then all of a sudden, that's when it starts to, f- it, it, it just becomes a cancer. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's a poison, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and yeah. It's, you just, you just, you do your company so much, but there are plenty of people out there who are qualified who yes, are not Yes, for sure. Just a fact. Good, good people, get shit done attitude, work hard. That outweighs, in many cases, um, let's call it credentials on a piece of paper. No, I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Sure. What, what are you guys excited about that you're working on now, man? I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure uh, lots of things, but you're talking about the live dashboards that you have up and running. This kind of, I mean, the, uh, what are you excited about as far as how Zulu Pods is evolving? I think like this is a good spot. Maybe like talk about a little bit some of the EOS, some of the operate like as we mm. as we start to grow. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe uh, maybe so, we're in the kinder- maybe we're past kindergarten. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different. Um, uh, systems out there for running a business, right? And and you know they all have their pros and cons. There's not. I, I definitely wouldn't say there's one way mm-hmm. to right. run a business, right? Um, so we're we're implementing. Uh, we we we're using a system called uh, EOS, the Entrepreneurial op- yep. Operating System. Awesome. You guys are familiar awesome with system. that? Yep. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> that's that's something that I'm pretty excited about. We've we've started implementing that. Um, Early this year, and uh, are are really making some some significant strides in in putting more systems in place while mm-hmm. still maintaining agility and speed, right? Mm-hmm. Decision making, but it's very important to us to you know have accountability mm-hmm. um, while not stifling creativity and and mm-hmm. and all those very important things to us. Um, Rather than just kind of running and gunning and, and flying by the seat of our pants, right? So, putting in this framework is is a really good move towards um, you know graduating kindergarten um, for us as a company. And I'm really proud of the team and how they've they've really grabbed a hold of the system mm-hmm. and subscribed mm-hmm. to it. You know, everybody has quarterly rocks. And uh, we're all driving, you know, we're paddling the canoe in the same direction. We have our goals, we have our, our vision, we have our mission, we have our core values that we, yeah. we hire by. We hopefully yeah. won't have to anytime soon, but we fire by those as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think the, that, that's something that's really exciting for me is, because again, it, it, one of the one of the pros and cons of the type of person who's drawn to a startup, right? The pros are all the things you've been talking about. This is a, a go getter, a self starter, somebody who will will see an opening and and build what needs to be there to fill it. But also, this is somebody who doesn't want necessarily to clock in and clock out and yeah. and you know follow a procedure. Mm-hmm. They want to get shit done. So. One reason we went with EOS for our framework is that it allows a lot of this agility and flexibility mm-hmm. while still putting in structure yeah. so that we can, we can grow in a measurable way. We can, we can make sure that everybody has the best interest of the company mm. in mind at all times. What, uh, when did you start the EOS? Uh, beginning of the year. Or first quarter, yeah. towards the end of the first quarter. Yes, yeah, so we so we're uh, uh, we're implementing EOS too. Hey. Oh yeah, and, and so he's he's the guy he's the guy to to to, to tap on the shoulder. Hey, right? awesome. Yeah, yeah L, L, our uh, L tens every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not every morning. <laughs> or every every Monday morning. Every Monday yeah, nine thirty. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. You're, you're making us look bad. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> L ten every morning. What the hell? <laughs> so no, doing uh, it wrong. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so it's funny. I I know of some founders. I won't. Say Say who uh, who it is, uh, Chuck Smith. Um, and, uh, <laughs> shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah uh, uh, Chris Hughes, but guys that had their um, longest, their company's long established, and um, uh, guys. I mean, for, for twenty years, and successful in their own right. I mean, very successful. And then they implemented EOS. And they said it was transformative in, in their businesses, and wished that they had done it in the very beginning. So oh, wow. I think 
I think that um, you you guys doing that now is, is a it's going to serve you very very well. It, it, I'm sure it already, it already is, but um, in the in the future, what that does for your company, you get that you keep that culture, you keep you know cultivating all of that. Um, but for investors, them understanding that you have EOS, yeah, and like hey, this is here's our day to day, here's our process, this is how we keep the team. That is a that's a big old freaking warm and fuzzy for an investor. So like that's a that's such a strong value add because it means it means you're trying to protect their dollar. Yeah. It means you want to make their dollar turn into ten, and that you're you're thinking it through and that you're being efficient with their money. And that's that's what every investor wants. Um, so uh, thoughtful, efficient, good job. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I mean, and uh, like just like I love the um, you know it's simple in terms of what we mm -hmm. talk about when we talk mm -hmm. about US. Um, I'm not a big like process person. Like I, I mean, we we have to have some processes, but <laughs> like, <yes>. but but <laughs> but you know you you see it like where if there's too many, you start adding too many layers of processes. You just you crush yourself. But EOS is simple. The, my favorite thing of EOS is the rocks and this mm -hmm. idea of we all yeah. got to, let's stay focused on our rocks. Yeah, there's going to be the pebbles and the sand that we got to work day to day. But if we don't start there, if we're not starting where we're focused on our rocks and we start doing the sand and the pebbles first, yeah. that visual of the rocks not fitting in the, yeah. in the jar, how can you not love that? Like right. in terms of, mm. that's so simple. Let's make sure when we go to our quarterlies, all of the key leaders are there and before the quarterly, you better think about the four or five rocks you're going to take on because then we're going to talk about those rocks mm -hmm. and we're all going to sit in a room and be aligned. Yeah. And now we've got this body of work for the quarter that if we can accomplish that, if we just did mm. that, we would increase that investor's yeah. dollar. Yeah. We would push ourselves forward. Yeah. And yeah. like that simple spreadsheet with the rocks is, I love it. Like when, cool. I, when we look at that and we leave the quarterly, we're like, Around that's, with the rest that's a of the lot of team. stuff we're going to get done. This yeah. Look at all yeah. the work we got to get done, and when we do it, and and th those are always attainable too. We they're not stretch goals. Like right. let let's let's be realistic. Let's put attainable things in there, four or five things, and then you start adding in <laughs> servant leadership, extreme ownership. We're so connected. We know that somebody asked me for something, they probably care about it because they need it for their rock. Yeah. How high do I got to jump? You know, how far do I got to run? Yeah. It's just, it's such a good alignment. It's so, that, that one piece of EOS is anyways, for me, I'm always like, okay, we're, I feel good we're aligned. Yeah. And yeah, it's awesome. EOS, it, it does, it is simple and like aligned so, um, so neatly with like that, you know, the Jocko discipline is freedom mantra. You know what I mean? It, it, being like, I'm definitely creative and in, in like visionary leaning. Matt's the visionary here. You know, it's, it's easy to, um, it's easy to view those like boundaries mm. as limits, you know, but um, man, we've just like uh, seen transformation in the, in the little bit of time that we've been using it. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's the difference between seeing the mountain and drawing the map to it. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's a, there's a, you know, um, I'm definitely a see the mountain guy and you know, if other people can't see it, no, it's just right through this. I mean, I can see it. I'm not a map drawer though. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm definitely the visionary and I'm not the integrator. Yep. That's right. You got Scott for that, right? Well, <laughs> Scott, actually not Scott anymore. I have, I have Jessica, uh, Scott, uh, Scott went and started his own thing. He's still involved and stuff, but yeah. So, oh, so, uh, so here, Scott yeah. was, so Jessica's my integrator, but we're also, we have another, uh, thing that's happening right now that I can't talk about, but, uh, Next we, we have another integrator <laughs> that's going to be coming in. That's, um, that just, uh, Good. good stuff happening. Yeah, we, got we have we have good stuff. things on the horizon. We're really excited. It'll That's be awesome. better for everybody because you know, you, you, as as a leader, you have. I believe this with all my heart. You you have to take a hard look in the mirror and realize what you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And celebrate that. Mm -hmm. I am not those things. I wasn't designed to be those things. I'm not that. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm not, I need. But I don't need to be it. Yeah. Right. So and so so it, finding those those parts that that you're missing, 
and then letting people be that and not mm-hmm. micromanaging the process because remember you're not they are then it's 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 everybody can achieve everybody can kind of come along I, no i don't need the credit you know you know what i mean like there's like a no we're all a piece of this puzzle i'll be my piece you be your piece we'll come together we'll look like a whole you know and that's 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 really you know so i'm i'm super excited about the, the little diverse team that we have uh, cuz they are literally every single one of them are everything that i'm not um, and uh, that's exciting and I, that's awesome I drive them absolutely crazy <laughs> <laughs> so if I didn't have them it's just, this would be it would oh my god god help me I definitely wouldn't be uh, getting shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway. Ge- gentlemen uh, this is awesome I mean you wanna you wanna ask the parting for parting wisdom here man no, no I do so um, we asked this question uh, so both of you I would like both of you to answer it um, there's it's a two parter uh, one uh, what drives you internally like like what's your I would say moral compass or your just your internal like what you your foundation as a human being um, and then uh, uh what advice would you guys give to people who are either on an entrepreneurial journey or who are like you are working for a you know, big company and like I think I, and they're, they're debating on whether or not to take the entrepreneurial journey. Like what advice would you offer them? So internally, who are you? What kind of makes you tick? Your foundation, uh, what advice would you offer externally to an entrepreneur? Great questions, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I might start with the I might start with the second one first. Um, I get really like fired up and excited when people want to talk to me about entrepreneurship, right? I, and sometimes they're almost like, "Man, this, like, <laughs> like I have the, I have a, a friend. His name is Will Hastings, um, and he uh, he started a drone company recently. And uh, you know, he's probably like he's probably like two years behind us, and he'll be like. He'd be like, "Oh man, thanks for the thanks for the encouragement, and and um, thanks for spending some time talking to me." And uh, like with him, I usually I just tell him, "I'm like, hey, just like keep keep working hard. Like listen to like." And he's already made that decision, right? So I, for the people that maybe have already made the decision, it's like, hey, like I don't, yeah, it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but like keep working hard. Like f- build yourself a small little team. Uh, if you can just find a few like-minded people around you, you'd be amazed where, if you start with three or four people, where that can go. Mm-hmm. You, need, you need a team in the beginning. Like, you don't think you can do it alone. You need to start mm-hmm. building some key people that you know, like, okay, this is a good core group. So, um, you know, I usually tell people that. Like, and then, um, you know, just kind of keep putting one foot in front of the other. Have conviction. Like, if people are joining you that are smart, that tells you that you're onto something. Like, mm-hmm. and then just, and then you have to have a lot of conviction because you're also going to get along the journey. You're going to get people to say you can't do this or that's mm-hmm. not going to work. And so I usually tell people like, listen to that advice, but filter that advice. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay if you have people that tell you that, or esteemed colleagues even, or people in positions that are like, that's not going to work. They may be wrong. Right. Like, they're they're even venture capitalists. Like they. They're gonna be wrong, like plenty of times. So, <laughs> so you know, but in the beginning, you know, think about it in the yeah, beginning yeah, when no. you try to raise money, well, you, no. a lot of it's no, 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 and then you're right. like, oh man, maybe I'm not, because they're the people that should be. Oh, they're, yeah. oh they're, they're they're always right. Rob, they're the that's ones right. Money, you know? <laughs> so yeah, in the beginning, I usually just say no, like, you do, you, know, t- you, do, you do tend to think that. Yeah, yeah you yeah, do yeah, in the yeah, beginning, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. and I'm using Will as this example because he's coming to me and like, oh, you know, they're telling me, you know, this is I don't have anything yet, or and it's like, okay, that's where. So I usually talk about the team with people, you know, and if if you got people joining you, you're on to something. So mm-hmm. that so go all in type of thing. Like, you know, put, wake up, work hard. Filter the advice you get. Mm-hmm. Like be careful about always listening to everything you hear. Um, and like usually I mean I kind of just like I know it's kind of cliche, but like just work hard one foot in front of the other cuz once you do those things like as soon as you start to build the team now, now it's just not you anymore. It's one times. It's it's four or five people that yeah. don't want to give up. Yeah. And then it just after. Then it just yeah. keeps growing. Um, and I guess for people that haven't uh, like taken the leap, it's it's um. It, it's almost like start doing like start almost building that team before 
before you like like start to almost figure out yep. is there a market here um you know and if if you can talk to some other really brilliant people especially smarter than yourself and they're like there's something there um you know like we always say when, when we were trying to recruit people we would always say well guess what you know general electric isn't going anywhere if you fail for a year you could go back mm -hmm. to general electric in a year but do you want to live with having a vision or an idea yeah. and never taking that risk like that that you could look at that down the road and be like man i don't know if i can live with myself like that so like I usually drop that line if people haven't made the leap because it's so true. Like you can always go back to another, you can always go back yeah. to an established company, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but sometimes in terms of timing, whether it's personal, the macro environment, if you don't take a certain shot at the right time, um, you might have lost that window. Um, mm. And then I guess as far as like what, uh, what drives me, um, I mean, there is a big part of what we do from a mission standpoint that, and we're always still fleshing out our mission, right? We want it to be more people focused. We want it to be, we want the product to be the end result of improving people's quality of life mm -hmm. on the day to day. Um, you know, and that's definitely something that I care a lot about is improving the quality of, of lives around, around me. Like, what can I do to do that? You know, mm -hmm. it, it can be our internal employees, our external uh, our, our our partners, uh, our investors. Like, can we can we go make some people some money? Yeah. Um, improve their quality of lives. Uh, that's definitely a big piece of like what um, motivates me. And then in terms of our product on the product side, um, I spent a lot of time in the defense world, but like I didn't really, I guess, care too much about like helping the warfighter. Um, but that's shifted a lot now, where I do care a lot about, okay, how can we bring technology to people that need it that keep our safe, keep us safe? Yeah. And um, mm. that's, that's important. Like it, that we, I mean, it's, it's more, it's a, that's important for me. That's um, awesome. It's, you know, to help just bring the best technology we have to keep, to keep us all safe. That's um, awesome. More important nowadays than it was oh, yeah. before. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. That's and cool. uh, there's other things going on that makes that even more, even more important. That you know that that weren't going on three years ago. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the people thing, the people thing, and the pro I guess there's two two part <laughs> two part answer to that one piece of the two no, part that's question. Cool, man. No, that's so. good. no, and that's good. that is so cool and beautiful that like good design, like a. Uh, like what you all have designed can impact in it, like people's actual lives. Yeah, you know? a, yeah. You may not be the guy like fighting the war, but with that, you uh, like pursuing something excellent, a better way to do something like that that has that genuine positive impact. I mean, you're definitely not fighting the war, but you're helping bring them home. I mean, yeah. it, it, I mean that's it. I mean, it's it's the way that that deploys and when that needs to deploy is at the most crucial time. And that's that's uh, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. That's, some real, that's some real a, American shit. I'll just, just love it over here. Home. <laughs> thanks, Dave. thanks. How about you, man? Um, I'll I'll try answering in order. Um, <laughs> so I like that you reverse engineered it. I'll respect it. Visionary. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so uh, I'd say. You know, for for me, who I am, my foundation, um, faith is is my foundation um, as a Christian. So that's that's really you know when you boil it down, that's that's what matters to me um, and family, of mm -hmm. course. Um, and I've lost sight of that at various times mm -hmm. in in the entrepreneurial journey, right? Yep. Um, and I think the you know it's it's easy to lose sight of what's important. You know, you start to think that you know the the a quick return is what's important or um, you know whatever is is sexy that you're working on is, is the most important thing but when it all at the end of the day um, yeah I think it's important to, right. to, to keep perspective of that um, and advice I would give uh, to to a potential entrepreneur to somebody who's looking to make the leap maybe to somebody who just um, is getting started um, is to is just kind of looking back at some of the conversation we had before, uh, I guess you know, know thyself. Mm. Uh, are are you, are you the, the the visionary or are you the integrator? Mm. And um, 
whichever one of those you are, find find your counterpart, mm-hmm. right? So piggybacking a bit on, on what Rob was saying, you know, people aspect, it's very, very, very important. I think if there's a theme to our whole discussion today, it's, it's how important the people aspect is. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there, there are obviously startups that people can do all on their own to a certain extent, but um, finding that counterpart, you know, to your, to what you are, it really is, you know, rocket fuel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I would highly encourage anybody who is either looking at making the leap or has already done it, if you don't have that component, um, I would encourage you to find it. Yeah. Awesome. And, and don't hire assholes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you, got, you guys aren't, and it's just fun, and you, we, we want to watch you win, for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you all. Yeah, cheers, likewise, guys. Thanks likewise. so much for, uh, for coming on the little podcast today. Yeah, hey. pr- appreciate you guys. Thanks for jo- thanks for having us on. Yeah, man. This is a awesome. blast. I, th- I made it through the whole podcast without making fun of you. Man, I'm proud <laughs> of you. Thanks, buddy. Still time. Yeah, I'm growing. I held my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, everybody.